Welcome everyone to our Riverside City College School of Business show. My name is Justin Hudson. And I'm Ajane Wilcoxon. One of our goals is to bring you entrepreneurs, academic instructors, classified professionals, and leaders within our community. Today we are joined by, hold on, Lorena. Woo! Franco. Don't you just love, I love how that sounds. <laughs> and she is one of our fantastic educational advisors here at Riverside City College. Well, welcome to our show, Lorena. Um, so let's jump right into it. So we want to know a little bit more about you. So where are you from? Uh, what high school did you go to? Um, and what college did you go to? And do you have any degrees? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. So mm -hmm. good morning. Um, I grew up in Hemet. Uh, oh, wow. I Hemet. went to, yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I don't want to, uh, well, I'm more of a Riversider now than I am from Hemet, but <laughs> <laughs> I can technically say I've lived more in Riverside than I have in Hemet, but I was raised in Hemet. I graduated from Hemet wow. um, from a alternative high school, so I mm. went to homeschool mm. um, or independent study. I don't know. Things have transitioned how they title them now. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, that's where I graduated back in 1998, a long time ago. Wow. Uh, but I did go to college um, and I did get my uh, bachelor's degree in organizational management from the University of Laverne and most recently from Cal Baptist University in strategic communications. Wow. Awesome. Wow. So, so oh, go ahead. So him, what about what middle school did you go to? Acacia Middle School. Okay. I used to live in Roma Land. Oh. Yeah. It still exists? I used to live in Romeland. I was catching lizards and I had a barn growing up. So you had I know plenty about, of fields. I know to about him. Yes. yes. I know about him. Yes. Wow, we learn something every <laughs> yes. day, y'all. <laughs> Well, I Romaland. thought it was bad me growing up in oh, Hemet. Yeah, um, uh, yeah Romaland, I think, is just a notch slower. Yes, that's why we moved to Riverside. Our side is the <laughs> That's right. That's why I say I technically can say I'm more wow. of a Riversider now than I am from Hemet. Oh, my gosh. I did the math, and I've lived more of my life in, in Riverside than I have in yeah. Hemet. So. And not to talk bad about Hemet, but there's no mall. I mean, they have a mall, but it's more like a little strip mall i guess you would say yeah it's been there it's always been there but uh i remember when the first walmart went up oh well, it's yeah. not the new super walmart but yeah. there wasn't a lot of uh panda express or dairy queen <laughs> so when i moved to riverside people would ask me do you want to go to panda express or dairy queen and i was like i don't know what like, they what's are that? Yeah. what is that <laughs> yeah. and That's then funny. years later they did actually open them up so you yeah. know they've moved on they've moved moved along so. so we're curious what made you decide to go to get that business degree Mm -hmm. So it was the work I was currently in. So I worked for the city council at the time. And so I thought I was going to continue moving up in that direction. So I did the organizational management. Wow. And then the masters. What made you decide to do that? Well, uh, the timing was right. I, you know, my kids were a little bit older. And so now with some of my new goals, I want to, uh, I wanted to get my master's degree in something that could allow me to teach in the classroom. So uh, that's why I did strategic communications. I love communications. Do you? Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. And you do a lot of communicating where you're at, don't you? I do. I think personal communication and social media communication, it's, oh, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. it's all part of our lives now. It's beautiful. So what are you doing now, currently? So do you have your own business? Are you a faculty member here at RCC? Like, what are you doing day to day? Mm -hmm. There you go. That's good. Yeah, I can I can say a lot about what she does, but I'll let her do it. But I can say she's awesome. Mm. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I, in my role, I actually am an educational advisor. Um, I support the business information systems and technology and law and pathway law. as well as our cosmetology students. Wow. So I support counselors and faculty. Uh, through the students and making sure that they have the support that they need throughout their academic journey. Oh, so awesome. whether it's onboarding, whether it's helping them with making a tough decision to drop a course or to retake it. Oh. Um, uh, now we're assisting them with transfer applications. Uh, we, we provide a lot of support. So unlike counselors or faculty who are limited on their time and their time, their day is very structured, mm -hmm. not that ours isn't, but we have a little bit more flexibility with our day and our time to devote to students and listen to them with some of the challenges they may be experiencing mm -hmm. or questions they may ask. So we do a lot with policies and procedures and explaining that to them and how to navigate the college college life so mm. yeah so how to navigate the college life yeah that's real it is it seems easy but you know policies procedures change regularly and so they need someone to help them navigate them and helping them utilize them to their benefit 
Wow. Not to our benefit, but to their benefit. Wow. Yeah. So what challenges are you seeing right now that the students are facing? Mm. I would say that it's just that understanding mm. these policies and procedures, right? Even ourselves, even uh, faculty members that I support don't understand policies and procedures, right? They're continuously changing. Um, uh, some of them are set by, you know, um, Title V regulations, but others are just policies that are institutionalized at our college, right? And so even faculty don't understand everything that changes and how it evolves. And so I think we tend to be, I like to be the advocate as well as the champion for the student. And so one of the things that COVID did was allowed us a lot more flexibility. So when students formally had to take a paper, get multiple signatures, even for something as simple as a late ad petition. Mm. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, you had to go get your uh, instructor to sign it, right. even though they verbally told you that they would approve it. Yeah. You'd then take it to the dean of that department. Yeah, then right. you would take it up to admissions and records. So you're spending you know, at least a couple hours trying to get all this done in between your class. Oh. or your classes and so now uh, we've been able to actually utilize technology to allow us to facilitate that I, I pride myself in being able to take take care of that in about 10 minutes for a student oh, so that's, that's student awesome. will send me an email from the professor with the professor saying yes I approve we fill out that document we send it on to the appropriate people they approve it electronically and then they get enrolled so a uh, student never even has to leave the comfort of their home or their classroom. Wow. So yeah, I have a lot of cosmetology students as well who are in class eight hours a day. Um, they don't have a lot of flexibility with their schedule. So supporting them through it, you know, when they have a break and they need to just send me a quick message about something that's going on, then I can support them in that avenue. So wow. yeah, so that's one of the challenges is that <laughs> students don't know what's out there to protect them, right? I always say my goal is to protect their academic integrity as best mm. as I can. Wow. Even though faculty do that as well, but we actually are looking at it on, on their transcript, right? On their paper. And so I want to make sure they don't lose money. I want to make sure they're not losing time. Like let's, let's make sure time and money are valuable. So let's maximize it. So time. let's maximize it, right? Um, is this something you can push through? Or is this something that, you know, you it's better for your own self-being that you don't, you know, you retake it at a different time. But also because I deal with cosmetology students and they're investing, they're actually purchasing kits. Um, we have to look at financial aid. Do they get it? And dropping this class, will it, you know, will it minimize some of the money that they're going to get? Mm -hmm. Are they going to lose out on the kit that they just invested in? So there's just a lot. There's a lot. And so I think understanding as much from the college perspective and how things work and sharing that with the students is really important. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. If there was one thing that um, you could tell students right now about how they could, what they should do, the first thing they should do when they enroll, they've been accepted in RCC, should you be the first contact for them? Absolutely. Mm. Whoever they can, whoever their contact can be, whether it be myself or anybody that they make a connection with, they need to uh, reach out and, and make those connections, whether it's through email, whether it's through phone call. It doesn't have to be in person anymore. Per in person is great. However, um, phone calls and emails are just as, as, as useful and resourceful. I'm standing behind, I, I sit at my computer all day long and I look at emails all day long. That is a priority for me. A lot of, I, I realize that that is a, a new method of communication. It's instant and uh, you know, it, people have other, other things that they're doing, right? They've got families, they're, they've got work. And so don't hesitate to reach out. Someone will respond, whether it's myself or someone else through another success team, uh, you will get you will get the support you need. You just have to make that initial contact. Uh, although our center does pride themselves in connecting with students who have applied within two days, uh, but it never hurts for you to connect with your uh, direct advisor. That's good. Justin and I were talking before, before we started, and we wanted to know what got you into higher education? Well, I think it was nothing in particular other than um, my life at that time, um, I was seeking part-time work. And so mm -hmm. um, I needed to stay within local government for retirement purposes. And I needed uh, some flexibility with my children. So I wanted to still be a professional with the part-time um, advantages, right? And so the college was a perfect option for me. Um, I came in at the very bottom. It didn't matter for me at the time what my title was. It never has really. Uh, but mm -hmm. once I got in and I was exposed to all the opportunities that exist in a community college, um, I set my goal to be able to be student-centered. I always wanted to make sure that I moved up and that I stayed in a position that was student-centered. Um, there's a lot of positions, you know, on the back end, and they're just as valuable. However, my 
personality personality uh, aligns with working with students. Wow, I like that student center. Yeah, so do I. And she said something that I can relate to. I know you can relate to too, Justin. Sometimes, I hope I hope you heard the students. She said she had to start at the bottom. She had to start at the bottom. She saw the environment, decided mm -hmm. this is where she wanted to go, mm -hmm. and then she set her minds on other things, and she moved up. That's powerful. So many people think I need to start at the top. Right, right. We got to put the work in. So you know, everything's not going to be handed to you. You have to climb that success ladder, and that's exactly what you did. Exactly. And I will share that actually starting from the bottom and understanding how it is just to support faculty or just, you know, unlocking doors for professors, writing canceled notes on the door, wow. posting them, has really allowed me to actually understand uh, the college, how it functions, right? We all come in and we think that there's just this one, you know, you take classes, that's all you do, and you transfer or you get your certificate, you go out into the workforce, but there's actually a whole lot. There's a whole team. And so one of the things that I find myself is having random knowledge. So people tend to come to me and ask me, well, who do we go for this? Or who do we go for that? And because I'm kind of well-rounded, because I started from the bottom, I've, I've worked in special programs, I've worked, you know, in curriculum on the back end where you never work really with students. I feel like I have a good understanding of how an institution works, right? Wow. And so whether it's a course outline of record, where to find it, how you have to launch um, curriculum um, changes, right? Whether it's a major or a minor. So you just have all this knowledge that comes in handy randomly, right? Wow. And so it actually even carries into the student experience, right? Sometimes when I have to convey why it is that sometimes we need to make changes, how that process works, it takes a whole year, there's an approval process. Explaining that to students sometimes who may have had an issue sometimes is, is really valuable. So I really do like that I had that opportunity to start from the bottom and kind of see uh, the variety of options that the college, uh, you know, provides. And now to leading me into hopefully be, uh, teaching, which I expect to be doing that in the spring as well as associate oh, awesome. faculty. Awesome. Yes. All right. So well rounded. What or who inspired you? Hmm. Well, there's a lot of people who've inspired me. Uh, I would always say that my mother was the first and foremost, and then it's my children, and then it's wonderful colleagues, right? Ever since I was young, I've depended on people around me to support me, um, guide me, because when you're young, you need people's guidance, you need people's experience to, mm -hmm. to make sure you stay on the right path. But um, I would say my mother. My mother is, is a fighter. She's mm -hmm. endured a lot, and as I've gotten older, I've realized that she was able to do a lot. She was a migrant. She was the first to migrate um, from her family. Um, and so she had to endure two divorces. And oh. so I think someone who is out here by themselves with no family support um, and to have to deal with two divorces and, and you know, keep going oh. is, is, is definitely someone worthy of my respect. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you. How do you maintain your mental health with the busyness of being in a college environment? Well, again, the students are, they're, they're the, pe the people who, who just keep you going, right? They motivate you. Uh, but things can get stressful, right? There's yeah. uh, 80 emails waiting for your response, mm -hmm. and there's only one you, and then there's a student in front of you, right, mm -hmm. who needs your assistance. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that at times you just have to walk away. The, the one thing that I am, not good at sometimes is that I don't take a break um, mm. and then you just tend to just, go, just go, go. you're just go 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 sometimes I thrive on that and other days I'm just exhausted mentally so I try to even just take a break and go to my car I always bring my lunch with me I always bring my breakfast because you just don't know what the day is going to look like yeah. I don't want to be hungry but um, sometimes just stepping away and just sitting in my car and listening to music because music is my jam that's that's oh. that's you know, it gives me, it rejuvenates me. So uh, sometimes I just love get sitting in my car and getting some heat and yeah. Okay. I love it. Yeah. I well, love it. Well, you brought up music. So we want to know what is one song or what is a song that is the theme to your life or best describes you? Wow. So I, I am very eclectic with my music. So mm. I, there's probably not any type of music that I don't listen to. Okay. But if I had to pick a song, I guess it would be, I'm a 90s girl, so okay. I would say it would be, Here we um, go. 
Alanis Morissette's You Learn. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Are you familiar? Of course. Okay, oh, okay. okay. Yes. That was, you know, that was probably one of my first, like, CDs that I listened to back okay. and forth. But You Learn <laughs> is just, uh, I think it, it pays ode to life is always uh, lessons, right? I, I, I right, don't think Morissette. that you're never oh. going to stop learning. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I love it. I wonder I, how many of our students know that song. We're going to have to put that yeah. in the notes yeah. at the bottom. That's a classic. <laughs> that, that, That's a classic. That, that really, really is. Very, yeah. very good. So then that means 90s, you were watching MTV back then. Of course. So did you have a favorite like group growing up, boy band? No, it wasn't a boy band. It was actually more, and I, uh, it's the Deftones. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Or, I mean, it could be Outcast as well. I mean... Okay. Outcast. Coming with that heat. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm, I, oh, I love wow. it. One of the things I'm known for is my variety of music. That's all. Now, what do your kids say? What do my about kids your, say? Your music. I don't think they don't say much. Uh -huh. uh, my daughter just wants to listen to Drake, and oh, I'm good with that. Uh, but well, you know, real quick, Drake has a great song. Started from the bottom. Now I'm here. I'm pretty sure you yeah. know about that yes. song. Right? Okay. Yes. Why? Well, I mean. I, I make my kids listen in, listen to alternative music just okay. because I want them to know there's so much out there. Oh, I, there's a lot. And there's you can like you can like all of it. Like yes. it's not just one or the other, it's right? Like, why not? I, I yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Deftones. I, I mean, even country, that. right? Let's do it. There's I love some it. great songs out there. I do, I love wow. it. I love That's it. That's awesome. So listen, listen. What is a book you would recommend to our students? Well, I'm going to say I'm not the best at reading books all the time. I start them and then they just sit there. But I am currently reading a book. Um, and it's called uh, For Forgiving What You Cannot Forget. Mm. And I love the title. That is what caught me. Forgiving What, what you, you Cannot, cannot forget. forget. Wow. You know, there's that saying, the book references how you say forgive and forget. But that's not necessarily true. And it doesn't mean that you can't forget. Give if you cannot forget. Wow. Um, oh, I need to like reflect so on that. So I'm, hmm. I, I do love it. It does have some references to like biblical scriptures, but very subtly. So it does kind of put those in your perspective. Things that I think a lot of people are familiar with. And so how you can kind of implement them. And so I haven't finished reading the book, but hmm. what I have read is it's actually really interesting. I mean, I'm always a supporter of interpreting what you want Everyone has to interpret things on their own, in their own ways, right? Mm -hmm. Based on their own experiences, on their own beliefs. Um, but it's good to read other people's perspectives to integrate it into your own thought process. Uh, that's one of the professors um, that I, when my undergrad had made sure to um, ingrain in us is that just because, you know, people teach us things or tell us things doesn't mean that uh, that's how we should believe or think, right? But it does allow us to, it actually starts the process of you being able to understand why you feel a certain way. That's how I think. I mean, I, I, I like to read books or I like to uh, see documentaries or listen to people speak because it either reassures some of my own values or mm -hmm. it makes me think of other perspectives or why other people think so, you know differently. So anyways, the book itself does um, bring some good points that think oh wow that's true this is why we do this or the, out of habit maybe and how we have to break those habits or, or break that cycle of um of thinking mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. yeah it's a great book it's a great book yeah wow. thank you Go well ahead. we appreciate your time and you know one last question what is one word that you would say describes you and why uh i would say it's tenacious oh wow okay tenacious yeah okay wow Dropping heat today. <laughs> I know, tenacious. Well, no, you gotta, you gotta unpack that. Why tenacious? Um, I would say I follow in my mother's footsteps, right? So I am a person who is, doesn't give up and um, I strive for my goals. They don't come easy, right? Just like our students. Um, so I have to challenge myself and there's a lot of things in life that will um, set you back, right? I don't want to say prevent you. Sometimes we say the word prevent, but they'll just, they're just setbacks. And mm. so, you know, when I got my undergrad, I was 30. When I got my master's, I was already in my forties. And so it's not a traditional student, but I valued it. And, um, I think I took away the most I could have. Um, and so I, I believe that, uh, tenacity is what pushed me through, pushes mm. me through every day. Every day. There's always going to be challenges. They don't stop. That's why we keep learning. And if I don't have tenacity, then 
I don't, um, you know, I can, I can be um, dwelling over over right. the the setbacks, That's but right. I don't, I don't want that. We don't want that. Yeah, no. that just holds us back. It does. Okay, so what is a thought or an idea you'd like to share with our Riverside City College students? And I need you to look at them yeah. and give them that thought or that idea, please. So I would say college is for everyone. Uh, sometimes students think that they are not college ready, they're not college bound, and I want to reassure you that college is for everyone. And I say that because I am a product of an alternative high school. My partner, my spouse, is a product of an alternative high school, and we have never let those things set us back, right? I still encounter students who think that college um, is for a specific type of person, and I want to reassure you that college is for everyone. If you just want to learn a skill, enhance a hobby, transfer to a university, college is for everyone, and we are here to support you. Um, don't ever think that college is not for you. Um, we are here to serve you and demand that from us. Expect that from us. Don't ever, you know, expect anything less. Um, mm. You know, if college isn't for you at this moment, it might need, not be right out of high school. It might be in five years. It might be in 10 years. But just know that college is always going to be here. It is an affordable option. Mm. You can start by just taking a class. I always tell my students, it is your choice what you do here at college. I'm just here to help you with making those decisions. Right. So if you just want to take one class, at one at a time on your schedule, that's what you're going to do. No one's going to tell you how to take it, how to do it, which class to take. We're just here to support you with making those decisions. Beautiful. So, well just said. know that. Wow. So Lorena, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. We look forward to seeing you all next, next week. week. Take care. Peace, Bye. Guys. Bye. Thanks. Awesome.